All right, so let's take a look at the box and exactly what comes with it. One of the first things you're going to notice here is, of course, the Ready for PCIe Generation 3. That's a great option here that uh, is going to benefit people with, like, you know, the NVIDIA 600 series and, of course, the AMD uh, 7 series GPUs. Uh, anything before that, you're really not going to get a big benefit out of it uh, because they just don't support the Generation 3 or their Generation 2. Uh, you're also not going to get that much of a benefit out of it until you get Intel's third generation processor in place and then you'll see that performance just really increase. <coughs> Taking a look along the bottom, you see that we have our typical logos, you know, your support logos, you do have SLI, you have AMD Crossfire, but you also see one that's Virtu MVP. This is a different implementation than what we've seen on a lot of other boards in that ASUS automatically activates this as soon as you install the software. There's no activation needed, it's going to be running, and you're going to get the benefit of having that add in GPU so you'll get that frame rate from there but you'll also get the encoding and the parallel uh, computing power that you get from Sandy Bridge or Intel's third generation processor so you're going to get that combined benefit and it's really going to add into it and just uh, you know as we saw with Sandy Bridge at uh, CES 2011 you're going to get that extra power from that CPU the GPU that's in the CPU as well as getting the frame rates of the add in GPU alright looking under the cover You'll see that uh, we have quite a bit of more, you know, quite a bit of additional information here. One of the first things we want to talk about is that on the Maximus 5 gene, you have the Micro PCIe Combo Card. This Combo Card, we'll show you a lot more about this later, but this is probably one of the coolest things that we've seen on this board. You still have, of course, your ROG Connect, your uh, Extreme Engine Digi Plus 2. Again, we'll go into that in more detail. Uh, as far as software, you get uh, Kaspersky Antivirus, you have the ROG CPU-Z, and you also get Daemon Tools Pro Standard. So this is the full version, this is not the light, and you're going to get the entire suite. Looking at the underside of the front cover, you'll see that the Supreme FX3. This is in uh, ASUS's new sound card, but they also have it segregated. We talked a little bit about this when we covered our, um, we covered these boards at CES this year, and they've just increased the the pathway these are now segregated traces so you're going to get a little bit more a little bit cleaner sound when you look at this and of course we'll cover the details and the performance of that once we get into the board the next thing of course is the Intel Ethernet this has been a big push from ASUS uh, going back to the P67 and even a little bit before that they're going to drop in that Intel Ethernet it's a much better LAN controller a little bit more power more performance and you're also going to have other options that are just going to make it a much better choice, especially in a gaming board or in an enthusiast board. Looking at the back of the box, of course, you have your typical layout here. You know, you're going to have your, this is a typical R, uh, Republic of Gamers layout. One of the nice things now is that they've actually added in a little bit of a graphic to show you what the back panel is going to look like. So you get exactly what you're going to get on this board. You can see they talk about the Supreme FX3, the Extreme Engine Digi uh, Plus 2, the two-way SLI or Crossfire, and the Micro PCI Combo Card. So that covers the exterior of the box with uh, one final thing we want to add in. One of the things we first noticed when we picked this box up is that it's not your typical cardboard with just a basic overlay. There's actually a vinyl feel to it, and it's very resistant to moisture or water. That's kind of nice. Uh, it gives it a different texture and different feel, but uh, it also makes the box a little bit more sturdy. All right, so that covers the exterior of the box. We're going to go ahead and get everything taken out, and we'll see exactly what's included and cover some of the features for this board. All right, so we've gotten everything out. And of course, you can see the Maximus 4 Gene box back there. Amongst the other three boards that we'll be covering very soon, we have the Z77V, the Z77V Deluxe, and on the other side of the box here, just behind it, we have the Z77M Pro. Those are going to be some additional ones that you'll see here in the very near future. But for right now, let's just concentrate on the Maximus 5 gene and exactly what you get in the box. Uh, you have four of ASUS's uh, SATUS uh, 3.0 cables. These are pretty nice cables. They're also nice looking. You have some standard SATA cables here. You have the ROG Connect USB. You have an SLI connector. You have, of course, their Q Connect. These are great. I love those. And you have the IO Shield, which has the, you know, Typical ASUS padding on the back makes it much easier to plug in. ASUS also threw in a, uh, 
a door hanger so if you're in there gaming you can throw that on there or give it to your kids depending upon your taste you also have the typical ROG uh, stickers which again these are great for labeling everything in case you need to change things out or you want to do a lot of swapping of course you have your manual and your, D your install DVD which has all of your uh, drivers, your manuals, your utilities, everything, and of course a uh, Republic of Gamer sticker that's inside there. Now the last thing we want to talk about is that uh, micro PCIe combo card that we told you, uh, we showed you on the box. This is it right here. This is probably one of the coolest things that we've ever seen that has been included with a motherboard. What it allows you to do is this is not on the board so you don't have to use this if you don't want to it plugs directly into the motherboard and we'll show you where when we cover the actual top of the board but you have two slots on one side you have a mini PCIe so socket this is great if you want to throw in let's say a wireless controller um, like maybe one of Intel's wireless controllers or depending on whoever you want to put in there you could put in what you want as long as it fits this mini PCIe form factor on the other side you actually have an M SATA port this is a micro SATA port. This would be great for throwing in an SSD um, from, let's say, Kingston, Runcore, any one of those. And you could use this because of its support and because of its lack of the need for that 55 millimeter uh, length. You could put any one in here, including the 70 millimeter or larger, which you could run this as a form for SSD caching, or you could actually use this. It's bootable. You could use it for your operating system. This is like we said this is probably one of the coolest devices that we've seen you can use either or or you can use both and it's going to run directly off of the board it's going to get its power and everything straight from the board and uh, in just a minute we'll show you where that is on the board itself again you know we just can't say enough about this feature and we're really looking forward to testing it out both as a SATA caching uh, SSD caching feature as well as potentially setting it up to boot off of maybe an 80 or a 32 gig drive with Windows 7 and then in the future perhaps Windows 8 all right, so that covers all of the things you get inside the box with the exception of the board itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board itself. Okay, so now we have the board out and you can see that it is a micro ATX form factor. This is going to be a nice small package you can put in a small form factor case. Um, again, you know, ASUS likes this one as their entry level, the sort of their gateway as it were into the Republic of Gamers boards. It's not like the formula which is a little bit step above and of course the extreme is going to be their top end for the Republic of Gamers whether it's for the Maximus line or the Rampage line. So let's go ahead and cover some of the features that you can just see on the front here. Um, you do have your two slots for SLI. You have a, uh, a 4X slot down here that you could use. It's uh, got an open back so it's going to allow an actually longer card but it's only going to be 4X electrical no matter what, uh, what you put in there. So you have your Supreme FX3 audio here with your uh, hardened traces that are going to go through. This, these are isolated traces that are going to allow just better audio. Um, these isolated traces are actually going to run to your output ports and they're going to provide just some shielding so you're going to get the best audio quality that you can without the interference from other components on the board, especially if you're overclocking. Um, you have your uh, buttons that ASUS likes to put on there. These are very stylish. They're along the bottom edge of the board so they're going to be easy to access depending upon the direction that your test bench has if, if you're going to run this on an open bench. Um, flipping around, we'll take a look over here at the top. You can see that what you have is you have your 1155 socket which is going to uh, support Sandy Bridge as well as Intel's third generation processor as we said before. You have dual channel RAM, four slots. Each one of these is going to be able to handle up to an 8 gigabyte module, so you can have up to 32 gigs of RAM in there. Um, ASUS does a lot of testing with RAM. In fact, if you were to look inside the manual, you'll see pay, you know, multiple pages of qualified vendors where they've actually tested these modules at different speeds to let you know that, yes, they will work at those speeds that they're indicated at. So we'll, uh, you know, looking up at the front here, we, you have your 24-pin port, you have a USB 3.0 header, you have your uh, memory go button that's down here, a little small red, uh, flat red push button. And then you'll no also notice as you spin, as we flip the board around, that you're going to have quite a few four pin fan headers. You have two here, they're both labeled for CPU. You have a couple along the bottom here. You're, on any ASUS board in their Z77 lineup, you're actually going to have a minimum of five. Now these fan headers are all tied into ASUS's uh, fan control system. The new one that they have, and this is, we'll show you this on the Maximus uh, 5 here, is that 
it's got an auto configuration utility. When you turn this on, it's going to activate each of the individual fan headers and it's going to run it at its minimum speed and at its maximum speed. From there, it's going to develop three individual profiles for silent operation, normal operation, and then of course maximum operation. This is nice in that it's going to do it per header. You can also isolate the individual headers to, so you can identify which fan is plugged in where and then label them. So when you're looking at the fan controls inside the AI suite, you'll be able to see those and you'll know which one is which and which one's operating where it's supposed to be. That's going to give you the maximum amount of cooling through your case. It's a great feature on this board. It's one that we really look forward to testing. And it's just, you know, ASUS has been working on these and it's a continuation of what we've seen from them before. But as with many of their features, they just continue to develop them and make them a little bit better with each new generation. Getting back to the layout of the board, you can see here this is the uh, heat sink for the Z77 uh, media control processor. It's a nice heat sink. It's got a little bit of overlap. You can get some good airflow underneath it if you need to. But it's also going to, uh, should dissipate quite a bit of heat coming off of this MCP. Um, with some of our testing that we've got going on with Sandy Bridge, we've noticed that this gets a, this uh, MCP can get a little bit hot. So it's nice to see that additional cooling there. Also on the ASUS board, you'll notice that you have uh, only two SATA 2 ports down here at the bottom. This was in a, the, done by design, so you've got four SATA 3, two are going to be from the PCH and two are going to be from the uh, uh, an onboard controller. So that's going to give you that additional SATA 3 and then your eSAT is actually going to be the additional uh, SATA 2 from there are going to be run from the back. Let's look at the cooling up here. You'll notice that you have your alloy chokes, you have some nice uh, solid capacitors that are going to give you long life on this board and this cooling is using some of the same powder coating that we saw with the saber tooth boards. It's really just, uh, it's going to, it does improve cooling and it also improves the look. We like that kind of matte look instead of some of the glossy looks that we've seen on their other boards. Alright, looking at the back here, we have the 8-pin uh, auxiliary ATX header. That's in a nice place. You're not going to worry about, you know, slamming your fingers, although we always recommend getting an adapter cable. Uh, just works out better and you oftentimes you'll get a little bit better uh, cable management if you have that extra length on that 8 pin connector. All right, looking right here you'll see that there is a row of pins. This row of pins is actually for that M SATA connector that, or M PCIe connector that we told you about. It's going to fit right here. It will mount to the board with a, uh, a screw that goes through the bottom so it's going to be secure. It's not going to get knocked around or bumped out. It'll be covered by the IO shield so you won't actually see this when you're looking at this from the front. The only thing that you will have is if you run your antennas out, you'll see right here along the edges of the, of the uh, I.O. shield, you'll see two holes. That's where your wires can come out for your antenna to make sure that you, uh, you know, th there's an access point there. And that's just going to come directly off of that card. And like we said, just plugs right in here and it'll sit down and, and be just in between everything sort of out of the way. All right, the last thing we want to take a look at here is we'll take a look at the I.O. Uh, back panel. You have your BIOS reset, you have your ROG Connect. Down here you have your ROG Connect USB port, that's the white one at the bottom. You have three regular USBs, you have four USB 3.0, uh, you have your eSATA, which of course we told you is from the uh, PCH on the, on the actual chipset. You have DisplayPort, HDMI, uh, digital audio out, there's your Intel network controller. And, you know, it's just pretty much a standard connection, but it's a good layout and everything's pretty clean on this board. So that covers the basic features and layout of, of the Maximus 5 Gene. And in our link below that links to the article that we uh, are write up, we're going to have some additional pictures and some additional descriptions of what some of these features are. There will also be some features that we uh, can't necessarily talk about here pointing at the board, but we'll show you the images and give you some more detail into what goes into this. Um, so that wraps it up. If you like this video, go ahead and click on like. Please share it with your friends. And as always, subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with what we've got going on.